Black women are struggling with infertility at almost two times the rate as our Caucasian brothers and sisters. I knew when I was about 25 years old what they kept telling me, you have a uterus full of fibroids. And so I didn't know if that was going to impact my fertility. I had just graduated from law school. Um, I wasn't interested in having a baby at that point. And so I kind of, I didn't have symptoms. I kind of let it go on and go on and go on. Fibroids are benign tumors of muscular and fibrous tissue that typically develop in the walls of the uterus. Fibroids cause a disruption inside the uterus such that it becomes not only hard to get pregnant, it also becomes harder to stay pregnant. Black women experience miscarriages at a much higher rate. I think it's almost always due to fibroids. When Tiffany married and was ready to start a family, she struggled to get pregnant but did not know where to turn for help. I think every community has that taboo subject, that thing they just don't talk about at the dinner table. Infertility is ours. I didn't have a voice. I was just struggling. I'm a lawyer by trade, and so I'm used to advocating for people. But in this, I couldn't advocate for myself. I didn't know how, and I had, I had too much pain, too much shame. And that's when I came across Fertility for Colored Girls. It's so difficult. Yeah. Um, and it's very difficult to be like told this basic lie your whole life that it's just everything's gonna work out. It really isn't. I do believe that God called me to start Fertility for Colored Girls to create this safe space for women, particularly African-American women who were struggling at insurmountable rates because there was no place for them to go. I went to the meeting and I was shocked because there were so many black and brown women there like me who were struggling. And it was the first time that I didn't feel alone. We're believing and we're cheering you on to the end. Yes. Black women in particular, we have experienced generations of oppression. We carry generations of stress. It's someone that um, says that you know, this stress and this trauma is also cellular, and it particularly impacts us on this infertility journey. Women, particularly African-American women, have experienced long-standing social, economic, and environmental stress that has really placed a burden on their bodies in a way that translates into more adverse reproductive health outcomes. And that term is called weathering, that this weathering, in a way, prematurely ages black women. Your stress hormones, cortisol, your flight or fight hormones known as catecholamines or epinephrine, norepinephrine, those hormones actually should only be present at low doses overall in your general day-to-day -day and only spike when you truly have a new short-term scare or anxiety. For people who find themselves in societies where there's maybe institutional racism, structural racism, their catecholamines and their cortisol levels are way higher than they should be. And so if someone is constantly under stress or their body is weathering, that has a lot of long-term impacts on all your organ systems. And over time, we see that manifesting in earlier ages of diagnosis with disease, earlier ages of diagnosis in terms of high blood pressure, diabetes, stress-related tension, and even birth outcomes in women. The Black community is often described as the most religious community in America, and there's a big push to just pray about it. Rev Stacy, because she's a reverend, really kind of demystified that and said, God made the science too. I had gone through one round of IVF, and when they went in to retrieve the eggs, they could not really get to my ovaries because they've got these fibroids all over the place. And upwards of 80% of black women suffer from fibroids, and we don't do anything about it unless it's life-threatening. And Rev Stacy just really gave me the push I needed and, and the permission to, to remove the fibroids and move forward on my path to, to motherhood.